In 1957, nearly 50 years ago, the American Medical Association defined alcoholism as a disease based on three criteria, a known cause, the progression of symptoms that worsen over time, and a known outcome, that is, jails, medical institutions, or death. Since then, we've learned a lot more about the role the brain plays and about genetic predisposition, which really sucks because who doesn't have an addict or an alcoholic in their family? I found my husband hanging in the garage one morning. Police called it suicide. They didn't investigate it. They didn't tape it off with that yellow tape like they do on the TV show, you know? And it was weird because there was a chair tipped on its side where he could have reached with his feet, which were only inches off the ground. I mean, he could have got his feet back on the chair. It was right there, nearly touching his knees. There were three ropes in the garage, Two were cut the same length, and the other one was the one that he was hanging from. Which was so strange, because my husband didn't know how to tie knots. He used to talk about suicide. He'd talk about drowning himself. He'd say how easy it would be for someone to kill him, and then make it look like suicide. He always wanted me to check up on him, you know? To see if he was okay. I mean, he was using quite a bit, but even so, I do it. I always checked. Except for that night. I fell asleep, and he died. That's so hard to live with. I didn't check, and he died. But you know, my dad died when I was four, and my whole life was pretty messed up. My mom remarried an asshole who screwed us three girls, his stepkids, up until I was 12, when my older sister decided to tell the school counselor. And the police came to the house and took him to jail for three months. After that, mom tried to commit suicide because she didn't know. And so she overdosed on some pills and had to be taken to the psych hospital. I got drunk for the first time when I was 16. And I, I was really, really messed up the whole day. And by the time I was 17, I was doing acid, weed, and meth. In high school, my friends and I would put wine coolers on our backpacks and drink them in class. I graduated, though. Amazing, really. I got pregnant when I was 19, and I cleaned up my act. I didn't use any of the times that I was pregnant, but I started back again once the babies were born. My husband and me, we were fighting a lot, and he was using two. Alcohol, heroin, pot pills, I mean, he was an everything addict. And I was getting scared because he was acting strange, regular. And I loved him, and he was a good dad, but he was fucked up. He kept telling me that somebody was trying to kill him. And I didn't know what to say. I mean, what do you say? He kept asking me why I didn't believe him, and then he would say, when they do kill me, I hope you find me so you can feel all the pain I feel. And I did when I found him in the garage that morning. I told the kids that their dad got really sick and died. I guess one day I'll tell them what really happened. I don't know. That'll be really hard. I was so numb. I couldn't feel anything. I was doing a couple of eight balls a day. I didn't eat. I lost 80 pounds. My kids would ask me, aren't you coming to bed, Mom? Yeah, I'll be there in a little bit. Yeah, try four days. 
Then I started to shoot meth. I mean, I didn't care. It was so bad. I didn't care about nothing. I trashed people's lives. I stole from my family. I scared my kids. And then I started to cook the shit. Man, that's insanity. When you see what goes in a Drano, the sulfur off of matches, lye, that medicine that heals the sores off of cows and horses, hydrochloric acid, Sudafed. The walls would turn this reddish shade after cooking it. Can't believe I did that with my kids in there. And then I'd load a syringe and shoot it. My in-laws helped to get me into treatment. Even though I didn't want to go. I just, I didn't feel like I was done yet, you know? How crazy is that? Sometimes I still feel like that. I mean, sometimes it is just so hard that I just feel like I can't do it. It's too hard. Life has always been hard, and drugs always took that feeling away from me, you know? But I've been clean for a year, and it's been tough. I mean, there's drugs everywhere, and it's a lot easier to do them, but you can't take the easy way out because you'll end up right back where you came from. That's why you have to find a support group, a community that will help you fight it every day, all the time. I never thought that I'd get like that. And you never think that you will. You always think that you have some sort of control over it, but you don't. I did a lot of things I said I'd never do. I slept with people for drugs. I started cooking it, stealing it. I even put drugs before my kids, which is so fucking sad. But I'm starting school in the spring, and I want to study psychology. I want to figure out what's in the minds of people. I want to be able to support my family by myself and have a car that works. That'd be nice. There's a lot of things that I have to do. There's drug court, taking care of the kids, community service, NA meetings. I mean, cleaning up all the wreckage that I made. And sometimes I get overwhelmed. I mean, it's, it's almost like I'm paralyzed and I can't do anything. 